idea of a grandfather and leaving a legacy. And what would it be like for this child to try and fulfill that legacy? And I started thinking, why one grandchild? Why not two? Why not six? Why not seven? Then I started thinking about what would this be like if it was written by some of the finest writers in Canada? Holy Eric, bless him, gave us free reign to be ourselves. And the seven characters reflect the seven writers. There's no first book, there's no last book. Some of the books are related. Seven series are written by seven different award-winning Canadian authors. Nobody has ever done anything like this before. So in his will, he asks his seven grandsons to do those amazing and exciting things. And I said, Derek, that's a pretty cool story. But he said, no, yeah, but that's not the kicker. Here's the kicker. I want to do something that's never been done in Canadian publishing before. I want to ask seven of the best authors in Canada to write each of the seven stories of those seven grandsons, and we're going to publish all seven books on the same day. He's got to go to Buffalo, New York, and convince a 94-year-old lady who used to be a movie actress to give him a kiss on the cheek. That's it. Fortunately for the book, things get a little complicated, and before he knows it, Spencer's driving a stolen Cadillac through northern Ontario with a guy with half a mustache, a chihuahua, a grumpy, a grumpy teenage girl, and, <clears throat> and the old lady, and also five large plastic bags filled with a mysterious white powder. It's a, it's a, it's a scene that shows you that you don't have to be, you know, good looking and intelligent and, and, and strong to be totally okay. If there's a deep message, that's the one I want to get across. You are sick, kid. Talk to me or I'll hurt you. I'll put you in jail, you will never get out. You could go there now. He slapped at my hand, but I pulled it out of the way and he fell down. <laughs> During the Second World War, he flies reconnaissance planes over Nazi-occupied France. He gets shot down, he hurts his ankle, and somebody picks him up. He motioned for me to lie it. At that very moment, we heard the hum of an engine. It sounded like a truck coming up the little road toward his house. Feet, he cried. And I got down, and he began to throw the dirt and saw it onto me. His eyes had grown to the great size they had been when he first saw me. The fear had returned. I lay flat and let him cover me. Then we heard footsteps approaching the farm. I'm going to die. It's as simple as that. The thought makes me feel hollow, but what can I do? I drag one foot up out of the snow. I have no idea how far I've gone or how far I need to go. The only thing I know for sure is that I'm not going to make it. The first thing that comes out of the envelope is really cool. It's a plane ticket to Barcelona in Spain. He gets a key and he gets a photograph. He goes to his mom shows her the photograph, and his mum looks at the photograph and she says, oh, good heavens, that boy in the photograph, that's your grandfather. What was his grandfather? As a 17-year-old boy, doing on the other side of the world from Canada, in the middle of a war, with this mysterious girl. <laughs> My grandfather died, they used his seven grandsons a task. My task, take his ass to the top of Kilimanjaro and sprinkle them. The book is called Between Heaven and Earth, which the Chukka people call the top of the mountain. My main character, his name is DJ. My secondary character, his name is Doris. Doris is 67 years old. DJ is so upset. This old woman is along. She's slowing him down. She'd stop me and take pictures of flowers. And before he knows it, he's in a fist fight in Norman Wells, which is just short of the Arctic Circle, with a guy that he has no idea is the town psychopath. The kid turned his bike around, pedaled 20 steps back up the trail, stopped the bike, faced Webb again, pulled a walkie-talkie off his belt, held it to his mouth, stared at Webb while he clicked the side button. Webb heard the chime of the walkie-talkie and the kid said, found him on the path, headed toward Raven Road. He released the button. The walkie-talkie crackled. Keep him in sight. I'm driving that way. 